To me, one story, if you take a step back from it and just say, huh, that's interesting. In 2008 was the year that an African American and a, a, a woman, one of the two most likely will be either president or vice president, that's a sign of some changes happening, regardless of what they believe. That is, it's a sign there are changes happening. In our business, in the advertising business, it's going through a lot of really dramatic changes. Um, it started with TiVo, when they said, okay, people don't have to watch your TV spots anymore. They just go right past it. That was a little bit of a, you know, there was about four years where everybody was freaking out. Um, and then it became the fact that people aren't really watching as much TV. They're, you're spending more time online. And then there's the fact that media is so fragmented. You know, it used to be we all watched Ed Sullivan and the Beatles. Duh. We all liked Elvis Presley. Duh. There was a top 40. Well, there isn't a top 40 anymore. There's this incredibly thin thing they call it the long tail. It's, there's a couple of things that pop through that. You know, American Idol or whatever might pop through and a lot of people gather around it. But mostly, it's a culture that's really thin and long with lots of different choices. So it's really hard to tell your story to people. Everything that you need to know about building a great creative agency and about how what happens in the process to create great Technicolor innovative design is, I think, extremely well represented in a movie from 1939. I wish there was one method that would always work, but in fact it is incredibly fluid and incredibly influenced by the team members. So taking a look at the process, I looked back and I thought, well, what in this movie, where are the parts that I think are the formulas where you end up with the best design? The trendsetters in this hall and also where I work at Eyesight Design are constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible on the web from creative design to strategy in user interface, from web standards to just creating compliant code. I have this problem. What's the best possible moment to diverge from the original, uh, original Return of the Jedi story and have it go off the rails? and what would happen after it did. And I worked really hard at finding a solution. And after I had the initial idea, of course, I then had to work with Lucasfilm and their continuity people to, uh, to refine the story. And a lot of people ask me if I had trouble working with Lucasfilm. They're somewhat, licensors are somewhat notorious, I think, for protecting their properties. And uh, honestly, none of the changes they asked for ever gave me any qualms. I, I, I see their job as you know, to protect a, a really well-known property from the likes of a first-time comics writer. Noticing more. So literally noticing more about their environment the way you did earlier today to find offers, bits of information. Remember, they're junkies. They're looking for anything they can use to build that narrative. They have to be changed. So you mentioned this. They have to be willing to be really changed and let go of what we would call your shadow story, a preconceived agenda about where that story might go, even who your character is. You have to be willing to be changed by the other person. And you mentioned listening. Sometimes we say like the uh, instruction, listen better, is confusing, but show that you're changed is much simpler. So they have to show that they're changed by the other person and really be willing to do that. In most cases, uh, they don't quite know what they want, so you have to offer up some options, but you need to be able to talk to them on a creative level and quantify you know, what's, what's the main thing that they want to get out of what you're about ready to shoot. And it's not always the most obvious thing. It's not always about what is explicitly written in the script. You know, there's contrasting images or contrasting things that are more powerful than the obvious thing. And you need to find out what that fine line is about exactly the elements that they want and how they want to present it. If this is the farm, the rows that are neat and, and organized, and the machinery that I can expect to go down those rows and pick and harvest the crops, what happens if I say, well, I want to grow a bush that's in a mound instead of a row, or if I want to do something that's a vine? It doesn't fit this institution. It, it's not conducive as an environment. You need to almost separate out what we like to think of as the greenhouse. And this is a place that is nonlinear. This is a place that's organic. This is a place where you experiment. You're going to have trays of things that are growing but not producing fruit. You're going to have things that are dead. You're going to have things that are inextricably climbing around like a vine around part of the building. That's the nature of creative process, and it's a place that um, we realized that we needed. We had too finely attuned machine and not enough reaction to how to create something that was truly new or off, off the mark. I've always worked on a sliding scale. In fact, um, I was one of the co-founders of Defunct Theater in town, and I encouraged us to do all of our um, performances on a sliding scale as well. So. Um, 
which is different than this whole radio head, pay what you will thing that they did. That doesn't work. I can tell you why. But sliding scale says, hey, we have value. Here's what the range of our values. And then we create a communicate to the customer, you know, when you pay more, that helps somebody else pay less. Follow my grandfather's adage that you simply work harder than the guy next to you. And two things happen. Others notice that you're doing that, and you do get that much better. So the, I went into the arts from this sort of uh, Oregon blue-collar loggers attitude of just work real hard. And so I thought you had to work that hard, and I did throughout the early, early part of my arts. And I think I took what was um, probably run-of-the-mill artistic aptitude, and I made it go a little further by just pushing it harder. There's a lot of disdain for all things American. In general, we all know this right now. But the design world has not been touched by that. In fact, it's, you know, I, I have not noticed a wrinkle in the sort of the appreciation or schedules of, you know, and in fact, the, they are aware that it's the innovation and the, 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 the risk the, the, the pride and lack and ego that we have that makes you able to break through with your creativity and your art. The book that really blew my mind was a book by Jerry Mander called In the Absence of the Sacred. Um, it was uh, really, uh, well, the people, you know, how many times people say a book and then you applaud. If you applaud, it's a good book. So yes, write it down and read it. It's incredible. Just be cool with the fact that it may obliterate your life. 